Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be sharing the fiction shortlist with you for the Reading Woman Award. If you haven't seen the first part of this series for this year, definitely go check out the nonfiction shortlist which I talked about last time. So I'm just going to jump right into this year's shortlist and to share them with you. It's a great group of fiction books. Uh, so these books are in random order, uh, but the first one is Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson and I adored this book and it was been really difficult for me not to talk about how much I loved it because I read it a few weeks ago and it was so close to the shortlist announcement I couldn't talk about it so I am so excited to finally share this book with you it's so good it's about really a part love letter to Mary Shelley uh, but also it's a love story between Rye Shelley a trans doctor and uh, Victor Stein who is working uh, to try to get people's brains uploaded to a cloud. So it's sort of like a thematic retelling of Frankenstein, asking the same questions, but what would they look like now? But then there's also this timeline with Mary Shelley that is more uh, traditional in that sense. Uh, it's a very playful book. It's a very different book. It does a whole lot of different things as only Jeanette Winterson can. And I absolutely adored this book and I flew through it. I cannot get enough of it and I am so excited to now share it with you uh, and it's so it's so playful, quirky, and beautiful. You definitely need to go check it out. Yes, uh, so good. And so that is Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. Another book that will probably not surprise you is on this list is The Old Drift by Nomoli Sapo and this is a multi-generational family saga of the founding of Zambia and what that looks like. So there's a white family, a brown family, and a black family, and how their stories uh, intertwine across generations and the different people groups that are in Zambia. And she does a phenomenal job. The different characters are written in different genres. This whole thing is narrated by mosquitoes. And it's just so intertwined and interesting. And even though it was very long, I, I felt like it was very rich and it kept me turning the pages. And it was just a very incredible novel. This is her debut and I just I just can't even right now. Uh, so this is one of the most beautiful books, multi-generational family sagas that I've read in a long time. So you definitely want to go check out The Old Drift and all that's going on. I'm afraid to give spoilers because if you talk about the second generations and what's going on with them, I feel like you're spoiling parts of it. But what's interesting is that Nalmwali looks at different historical events in Zambia's history and plays with them. There's a lot of different literary traditions going on in this book all at the same time. So I feel like in a lot of senses, it's also looking at the heritage of her own literary tradition that's happening as well. So go check out The Old Drift by Nalmwali Sapal and we can talk about it. One of the most stellar books, both here on booktube and elsewhere, is Women Talking by Miriam Taves. No one is surprised to see this book on this list, uh, but this is just such a stellar novel. I read it in one day. So we start this novel out with these Mennonite women, and it's uh, come to light that these men in their closed Mennonite community have been drugging women and girls of all ages and raping them and doing this repeatedly. And so once it comes to light, those men are arrested. Other men go off to go get them and get them out on bail. And while they're gone, the women have to decide what they're going to do. Are they going to stay and do nothing? Are they going to stay and fight? Or are they going to leave? And so this book is sort of like 12 Angry Men in that it's all of these women in a hayloft discussing things like theology and their faith. And they're making this decision in the context of their faith. And that's an incredibly important part of this book. It is very respectful. And when we talked to Miriam Taves on the podcast, she was very adamant that she wanted to tell these women's stories in a way that made sense for them and in a very respectful way. So even though Miriam Taves is a secular Mennonite, she no longer practices the faith. She wanted to be respectful of these women. And this is her fictional response to true events that did actually happen to a Mennonite community uh, up in Canada. And so uh, this is kind of like uh, Miriam Taves' imagined response and almost her hope for them for the future of what might happen to the real life women who are experiencing this. If you want to learn more about that particular part of this novel, I will have a link to our discussion um, with Miriam Taves as well um, down in the description box. 
So one of my big author crushes is Jacqueline Woodson. And so I also think it surprises no one that the next book on our list is Red at the Bone, which is her most recent uh, novel. It came out a few weeks ago. And this is one of the most amazing audiobooks as well because this is about a family but you're hearing the same story told from multiple perspectives so we have this uh, granddaughter whose parents uh, had her at, as teenagers and then you also have the grandparents perspective of what happened when their kids had a baby when they were teenagers and ended up raising this granddaughter and so you hear from multiple people and so the audiobook is told from multiple perspectives and those perspectives have different narrators. And so it's a full cast as it were. And I absolutely loved the audio. I love this story. And Jacqueline Woodson is just phenomenal at everything she does. And since she is a poet as well, every word is there for a reason. And it's beautiful. I also went to an event here in Greenville to see her because she used to live in Greenville. So she comes back and does events here. And it's so good. It's so good, guys. So definitely check this out and definitely check this out on audio because it's a phenomenal audiobook. Speaking of phenomenal audiobooks, one of the best books on audio as well this year is The Lost Children Archive by Valeria Luiselli. And this is about a woman traveling with her husband and they each have a child from a previous relationship. So she has a daughter and her husband has a son and they've a cohesive family now, but uh, their marriage is not doing well and one of them is a documentarist and one is a documentarian and there's just a lot of play on that and who gets to tell whose stories. What's interesting is that they both use audio in their work so a lot of that translates well to the audiobook. Now there are like manuscripts and photos and all these different things in these archive boxes that are kind of like these inter interludes between sections and that's really interesting as well. There's so much going on in this book um, it's very layered, very interesting in the way that Valeria Luiselli is talking about like missing children at the border and kind of like what missing or migrating people have looked like in history. And I don't want to tell it anymore because that's a spoiler. But yeah, I would highly recommend listening to this on audio with, along with the print edition there before you so that you can experience both things because I think they both have their unique experiences. And so to me, I had this in print as well as listening to it on audio at the same time. And that was an excellent reading experience. And I would highly recommend um, that you go check it out that way. The last book on the list is Cantoras by Carolina de Robertis, and we talked to her on the podcast as well. So of course all the interviews will be linked down in the description box. Uh, but this is about five queer women in Uruguay in the 1970s, 1980s. All of these women are fully fledged characters and are queer to different degrees on the spectrum and, and that's really interesting. And also their sexual expression is very different in their styles. Maybe they prefer to be in committed relationships or maybe uh, they like to go out on multiple dates with women and, and different things. And so I found this book so interesting because we so rarely see queer women of color uh, in stories and this one has five and, and this really puts women at the focus of the story. There are men but they're all side characters and uh, I, I think that's so important that we have these stories that have women at the focus and so you have these five queer women and their experience of living during a dictatorship and what they do to try to find a place of their own and just what that looks like. They all have different experiences coming out to their families and different things and they're all different and I feel like that is just so important because oftentimes we like to paint a type of person with a single brush, but in reality, there are so many different types of people because there are so many people. You know, there are so many different types of queer people as there are people. So I really love this book and, and what it did with that and the representation that it has and how this book is really just celebrating women, uh, both platonically and, and love stories and, and just a wide range of things. So I would highly recommend this book. Bring your tissues, please. <laughs> so yes, definitely go check this out um, along with all the other books on the shortlist because we love them all. So here's the entire shortlist for the Fiction Reading Women Award and I hope that you enjoy all of these books and stay tuned for the winner announcement the first Wednesday of December and of course I will make a video about that as well. But yeah, all right, if you want the most updated news, you can go check out Reading Women social media at The Reading Woman or uh, the podcast, wherever you get your podcast. So yeah. All right. Thanks so much, guys. And I will see you in the next one.